Okay, we should probably start. Um, so uh, welcome uh, everyone uh, to session 4B, a uh, session which is dedicated to uh, subjective uh, well-being. We are going to have two papers um, on uh, this topic. Uh, but before I present uh, the, the speakers, I would like maybe to uh, say that it's a really uh, probably a peculiar session, maybe a bit sad because the person who submitted the first abstract uh, that is going to be presented uh, actually uh, passed away um, after a few weeks or a few days even after submitting the abstract. So um maybe the uh, presenter could say uh, will say a little a few more words uh, uh, about uh, about it so maybe just asking you to share a few thoughts or to have a few thoughts for uh, that person who um uh, unfortunately uh, left us uh, far too early so are you two day back in one day um having said this uh so Let's go back to the uh, proper uh, presentation of the speakers. So we are going to have two speakers, as I said. The first one uh, and the first presentation is about the investigation of the influence of COVID-19 pandemic on the well-being of British population. Um, <clears throat> so this paper is uh, presented by uh, Gosha Wojtysz. I hope I pronounce uh, your uh, name yes. properly. Uh, Gosha is a lecturer in statistics at the University of Plymouth uh, since 2013. She's also a Southwest Branch Secretary of the Royal Statistical Society. And uh, she is uh, therefore uh, being the PhD supervisor of uh, Ayotunde. She will be presenting uh, her paper. So, uh, as we've done with other presentation, uh, maybe you can uh, try to stick to fifteen minutes presentation plus a five minutes question. Thank you. And if you want to share your screen, yes, thank you. Um, yeah, perfect. Thank you. So, um, uh. Yes, if, um, thank you very much for having me. And uh, if I if I start breaking, then please let me know. I will then stop my camera. Um, so uh, I, as as mentioned uh, before by Pierre, I um, would like to present this uh, uh, results of the study done by Ayotunde. Uh, so I really talk for her work. Um, so uh, just to uh, present uh, who was the supposed to be the proper speaker in in, in place of in place of me Ayatunde has uh, submitted the abstract um so this was actually her part of the master's uh, data science that she did um and yeah I just want want to say that uh, she was a wonderful wonderful person um very devoted to her work and a very positive person and I would like to see this um, event today as actually a celebration of uh, her achievements, um, not to be sad, but rather uh, celebrate her life. Um, so, yeah. Um, so uh, the aim of the study uh, was to see uh, how the subjective well-being uh, of the British population changed during the COVID pandemic. Uh, while taking into account other factors that can uh, affect the well-being. Uh, so we looked at two data sets from the annual population survey. These are the specific data sets that were selected. Uh, so the first data set that covered the period just before the pandemic from October 2018 to September 2019. Uh, and uh, since the pandemic was declared in March 2020, then the second data set, uh, we wanted it to be entirely during the pandemic time. So it covered October 2020 to September uh, 2021. Uh, so these data sets, uh, they include the, the labor force uh, survey variables. Uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, it, 
in particular, including education, employment, health, and ethnicity. And we uh, use the second edition of the data sets uh, that have added, that have the well being variables added to them. So the four uh, subjective well being measurements that are uh, included in the data are um, the happiness, uh, how person ranks their own level of happiness, and the level of satisfaction with life, uh, and the extent the person feels that things they do in their life are worthwhile. And all three of them are on a scale from zero to 10. They are whole numbers, um, with zero being the lowest and 10 the highest. And the fourth uh, variable is the level of anxiety that person feels. And this one is also a whole number between zero and 10, but it's sort of the scale is flipped because uh, uh, very low anxiety is obviously a positive thing. Uh, and number 10 high is a negative uh, indication. Uh, so uh, the data sets, uh, were large, so uh, they had uh, around 500 variables and well over 200,000 uh, observations in each data set. Um, but it was found that uh, for the four well being measures, um, around 48% of the values were missing. So uh, those values, uh, those uh, observations were completely removed from the data, which is something to keep in mind uh, when looking at the results of our analysis. Uh, we did not do any modeling of that missingness. Um, so uh, the first uh, look at the data is just to look at the overall um, distributions of the four well-being variables before and during the pandemic. So these are the histograms, the bar plots for uh, happiness. The red or the pink color, uh, it refers to pre-pandemic period. Uh, so uh, where we have the boxes with this pink color on top, it means that there were more responses in that category before pandemic. And the blue color shows that there were more responses for that particular uh, range in, uh, during the pandemic. So we can see that there are differences uh, for the high levels of happiness, which has significantly dropped uh, during the pandemic. And there, those values went uh, into the more medium levels. Uh, whereas uh, there isn't much change in the lowest, at the lowest end of the distribution. Um, Obviously, the distribution is skewed, so there is very few uh, uh, respondents in these areas uh, by percentage uh, already. Um, the medium medians uh, did not change, but the average values have uh, significantly dropped, so the confidence intervals do not overlap um, for them. Uh, for the satisfaction, we see more of a similar trend. So again, the levels, uh, values for nine and 10, which is the highest satisfaction have dropped during the pandemic significantly. And um, the values between four and seven, so the, in the middle have increased. Um, for WARF, we see also very similar trend. Uh, whereas for the anxiety, the distribution is, uh, a little bit different and we see slightly different tendency. So um, there is a big drop for the value of zero. So no anxiety uh, has, uh, the percentage of people has decreased. And uh, during the pandemic, we see that the levels of anxiety have increased uh, for all the values between two and, and eight, in particular uh, for the category six, between five and seven, uh, there are more people during the pandemic with this uh, medium to high anxiety levels. So these are the aggregate results uh, without taking into account any of the covariates. Um, uh, I would also like to mention that the four well-being measures, they are correlated, of course, with each other. So there, there are some uh, quite high correlations, for example, between satisfaction and worth. Um, around 0.66 uh, 
um, and negative correlations between anxiety and the three other uh, indicators. Uh, what I would like to mention is that the structure of correlation uh, did not change much uh, before and during the pandemic. The numbers are very, very similar. The only difference is that this number, not 0.66, for uh, satisfaction and worth has dropped uh, a little bit to not 0.62. That was the biggest change, but otherwise the numbers are almost identical. Um, so now, we have chosen 12 covariates uh, as predictors for uh, well-being uh, indicators. So they include age, whether a person claims benefits, country, disability, status, education, ethnicity, employment, housing status, marital status, uh, long-lasting health conditions above one year, religion and sex. So, um, these were the 12 that were selected. Obviously, uh, it was uh, a lot of work for Ayatunda to actually decide which variables to include because there is an abundance of them in the data. Uh, but all the results will depend on these variables only. Um, for four of them, we have uh, noticed there were some missing values. Uh, so for benefits claim, disability, uh, long-term health condition and education, there were these between 12, 12 and 25% uh, of missing values. Uh, but upon inspection, um, it was uh, clear that all, almost all of those uh, individuals, they were in, uh, they had uh, above, they, they were above 65 uh, of age. Uh, so instead of either uh, imputing the values or removing them. Uh, we just created a separate category for those individuals. Uh, we described this as a label pensioner, uh, which was just made up by us. <laughs> um, so uh, to solve the missingness problem. Um, so yes, for example, for benefits claim, we, we, we had three categories that was yes or no, or a pensioner to describe those people who did not answer and they were also above the age of 65. And the same we have for disability status. Um, so now for the model. Uh, so we applied multiple linear regression for both variables and for each well-being index. Uh, even though the distribution of the uh, outcomes uh, are uh, they're all skewed, but because of the large data set, um, the estimates would still meet approximate uh assumptions approximately of the normal distributions so that's why we felt it was uh correct to apply the uh, multiple linear regression we did not include uh, interactions due to very large computational requirements from the model because the data were quite big but that's another thing to keep in mind while looking at results um so now I want to just uh, show a selection of results from the regression models. They're not all the results because there, there would be a lot of them um, and I would have to take probably half an hour. Uh, but just to highlight some of the uh, things that we, more interesting things that we found. So um, for the happiness, uh, when we look at the sex and employ employment status, um, these are the estimates, uh, regression coefficients with 95% confidence intervals uh, indicated in the graph. And again, the pink color refers to the pre-pandemic data set and the blue one is for the pandemic data. So uh, we can see a uh, very uh, interesting phenomenon here that the co coefficient, it was positive before the uh, pandemic uh, and negative during. So that means um, before pandemic, uh, females were uh, having on average uh, higher levels of happiness than males. Whereas during the pandemic, that coefficient became negative and significantly negative. So they were less happy than males. Uh, we do not see significant changes in how the employment uh, or lack of it affected uh, happiness 
during or after the pandemic, uh, or, or before the pandemic, sorry. Um, for marital status, uh, a lot of coefficients uh, for different categories stay the same. Uh, we observed this one uh, significant difference in the status of the person being widowed. So before pandemic, uh, wi widowed uh, individuals were significantly less happy than single or and never married people. Whereas during the pandemic, that difference was not significantly, uh, did not exist. Uh, so not sig statistically significant. Uh, so we're there were no difference between being widowed or single, um, which doesn't mean that widowed people became more happy, maybe just single people became less happy, actually. So, but there is this change. Um, and also for uh, housing status, um, a couple of differences were uh, where the person uh, had a house bought with mortgage, so their happiness was still less than those who owned it, but the difference is smaller. Um, and similarly for those who rented houses. So there is all the coefficients, as we can see in here, there they became closer to zero, which means there is uh, less differences in happiness on average. Uh, for the disability status, we have observed um, smaller uh, effect of uh, being disabled in terms of uh, those who are not disabled, they are happier than those who are disabled, but the difference is not as big as, as it used to be before pandemic. Um, and there is a number of variables that we didn't see any significant change uh, overall for the two data sets. So ethnicity, religion, country, uh, long-term health condition and benefits claim, uh, they didn't change how they affect happiness. So that doesn't mean that they don't affect happiness, it's just that the nature of that relationship seemed to stay the same, more or less. Uh, now I want to show a, a couple of results for satisfaction. So again, uh, we- Sorry for interrupting you, but uh, we, are, we probably have only two or three minutes left. Yeah, I'll be fine because I have much fewer results now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so uh, for satisfaction, we see the same um, effect. So again, the relationship for the uh, females have flipped. They became less satisfied than males, even though before they were more satisfied. Um, and all, also for education uh, status, we observe this uh, phenomenon where people with no qualification or who don't know, uh, they became more satisfied than those who have degree. Um, and last uh, thing for satisfaction, the disability status, again, we see the coefficients are closer to zero. So people uh, are more satisfied if they don't have a disability, but that difference is smaller. Uh, for worthwhile, uh, again, the the picture is very similar. So even though the relationship did not flip here for females, so I'm going to skip maybe one or two, just to go to anxiety, that's the last um, indicator. So again, we see anxiety in females uh, was greater for uh, before pandemic, but even increased during the pandemic. Um, and the last thing I wanted to highlight uh, for the ethnicity, what we noticed is that, for example, the Chinese people, they were uh, slightly less uh, anxious before the pandemic, but they became more anxious than white people during, which I think is quite interesting, Over, even though the confidence intervals are quite uh, wide in this case. So uh, yes, this is just to uh, summarize that uh, the interesting thing that we found is that the direction of the relationship have flipped in several cases, which I, I think is uh, important. Uh, and I think I should end, that's basically uh, most of what I wanted to say. Uh, thank you for your attention. And this is my email address if anyone would like to contact me. Our second presenter, uh, Simona Tenaglia, 
I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly. Yes. Uh, he's uh, going to present a paper on subjective well-being uh, by occupation in the UK, uh, looking at uh, trends across time uh, between 2012 and 2022. So Simona is a senior analyst at the What Works Center for Wellbeing. Uh, maybe you've heard about that center if you're specialized in, in well-being. And uh, she's uh, a doctor of in uh, economic um, theory with more than ten years' experience in uh, labor market research. So, Simona, the, the floor is yours. What I'm going to present is a work about uh, well-being by occupation in UK during 2012-2022. Um, the aim um, of this analysis has been to look at well-being across occupation and uh, how well-being has changed over time by occupation and how it has been affected by pandemic using the, um, the very granular data uh, of the annual population survey. Uh, this analysis uh, was uh, uh, a part of this analysis was already done in 2016 uh, by Ivan McKinnon uh, at the World War Center. He was looking at the relationship between the gross annual salary um, in 2013 and the mean life satisfaction um, for the period 2011-2013 and he found a positive relationship looking at the 90 groups of occupation. So what we want, wanted to do is to update this analysis and deepen this analysis because our idea is that uh, especially for people who work full time, work occupies a major part of the day in their, in, in, in their life. And um, so it has a lot of consequence on our well-being. And uh, also because in our workplace, we have social relationship, we have friendships, and uh, related to work, there are also several activities like commuting. And uh, uh, when we have uh, lots of information available on jobs like uh, pay, hours of work, for example, during pandemic, if we have to be in person or we, or we can work uh, uh, by home, uh, we have a uh, few information about well-being for different occupation. And uh, this information, for example, can be very important for young people who are choosing their careers, and, uh, but also for employers and for policymakers, because uh, uh, having information about uh, well-being for different occupation, for different occupation, you can shape more targeted intervention aimed at promoting at promoting well-being, and. Uh, while there are a lot of work, um, uh, no, some works, not a lot, uh, that look uh, um, at the well-being for occupation, but at a very general level, there are not a lot of studies that use more granular data. And this is why we, we, we did this, ana did this uh, analysis. And what I'm going to present is exactly this, the data we used, and the groups of occupation we used. Uh, we will look at well-being across occupation and over time. And we look also at proportion of high and low well-being during the pandemic. And um, then the last two steps, we will look at the relation between life satisfaction and trip job quality aspect. And finally, uh, the determinants of well-being within occupation using an odds regression. So uh, we use the annual population survey data from 2012 to 2021 and the annual survey of hours and earnings for 2020. Uh, uh, we use the classification of the occupation, uh, which is the standard occupational classification, um, where jobs are classified according to the concept of skill level, which means uh, we know that there are four skill levels, uh, from the lowest one, uh, which corresponded to a complete compulsory education, so a general level of education, to the fourth one, which corresponds to a degree or equivalent period of relevant work uh, or work experience. But we know that uh, for each group, there is uh, heterogeneity, heterogeneity across occupation, of course. But in fact, they, uh, for each group, they have the same skill level. Um, they have the same skill level. 
And then, as in the presentation uh, before, uh, we will use the ONS for questions on well being for life satisfaction, happiness, worthwhile, and anxiety. Uh, so the first thing we looked at is, of course, at the um, distribution of the well-being variable, the four well-being variable. Here I'm presenting only two, but uh, we can see that looking at different occupation, uh, they more or less have the same shape. Uh, even if uh, uh, running a test, we saw there are slight differences. Uh, then we look at we look at the um, the weighted mean for the for well-being variable by occupation, and uh, we saw that for the uh, for the mean level uh, of life satisfaction, managers and directors and professional occupation, the two green circle circle uh, at the top, uh, they show the highest level of life satisfaction, while caring, leisure and other services occupation show the highest level of worthwhile, but also the highest level of anxiety. While a uh, skill trades occupation and process plant and machine operative show the lowest level of uh, anxiety. Then what we did is to look at the uh, and the, the trend over time of the mean level uh, of the all the four well-being variables and what we can see is that uh, um, for we had the positive trend that of course was interrupted during the the pandemic so we have an increasing trend till 2019 then a drop in 20 in in, in um, in the, in the year of the pandemic 2020 and then uh, again an increase in 2020-2021 but um, uh, what we can see from this graph is that uh, uh, managers and directors and professional occupation are those that show the highest mean level of life satisfaction while if we look at anxiety always for uh, all the nine major group of occupation uh, we have uh, uh, that uh, um, the opposite uh, trend a uh, decreasing uh, we have decreasing value t to till 2019 then a peak in 2020-2021 and then a decrease in 2021-2022 uh, in this case we can see that managers and directors uh, are those that show the lowest level of anxiety while a uh, caring leisure and other services occupation during the pandemic show the highest level of anxiety. Then uh, we look at the proportion of people um, that uh, answered, that gave the highest answers to the to life satisfaction, which means that they answer nine on te or 10 in a scale from zero to 10 uh, for the three years just uh, before, during and after the pandemic. We can see that for all types of occupation, the proportion of people that answered to have high life satisfaction dropped during the 2020-2021, the year when the, there were all the closure. Um, with professional occupation and associated and professional technical occupation that show the, the highest decrease. Then um, we look uh, at the answer for high anxiety, uh, which means we look at the proportion of people that answered to have an anxiety level comprised between 6 and 10. And um, we can see that for all types of occupation, there was an increase of people answering to have an, high le an higher level of anxiety during 2020-2021. And uh, among them, there are care in leisure and other services occupation, professional occupation, process plant and machine operative, and administrative and secretarial occupation. They are, these are the, the, um, the occupation that had, that had the highest increase. Then uh, we wanted to look at three job quality aspects um, because we are, we are interested, interested in looking at three job 
quality aspect that are they are the average gross annual salary uh, the type of job if the job is uh, if they have a permanent job or non permanent in some way and uh, we were interested in the place where the work is mainly carried out and uh, this was interesting for us not only for updating the work uh, run in 2016 by Eve McKinnon but also because uh, uh, well-being in the workplace has an effect in the overall life satisfaction and um, given that uh, um, at the work work center we worked a lot uh, on the uh, k on the five k drivers of workplace well-being uh, we can see that these three job three job quality aspects um, have an effect on workplace well-being and fall in three of these uh, big five drivers, which are um, the gross annual salary fall in the security driver, in the financial security in particular, um, and also uh, to have a permanent job or not having a permanent job fall in this, uh, in this driver. But uh, to have a permanent or not having a permanent or, or having a job not permanent in some way fall also in the purpose driver because uh, to have a permanent job uh, allows you to um, to invest more in your job maybe to have more uh, career opportunities and uh, to be more attached to your job and uh, while the place where the work is mainly carried out fall in the environment driver because uh, it is uh, of course related to the physical environment it is related to commuting to the tools you have to to work and uh, all these aspects uh, of course have an effect on the overall life satisfaction uh, so the first thing we did we updated the graph that we saw at the beginning and uh, we used the gross annual salary um, uh, for 2020 and the mean life satisfaction uh, from 2015 uh, mean life satisfaction for the period 2015 2020 and we can see that there is a positive relationship between these two variables and um, we can see that in the top right quadrant we have mainly um, uh, managers and directors while in the bottom left quadrant we have a lot of elementary occupation then we looked at mean life satisfaction and mean anxiety um, um, for all types of occupation considering those having permanent job or no permanent job in some way and what we found is that uh, for all types of occupation, those having a permanent job show the uh, show a highest mean level of life satisfaction and the lowest mean level of anxiety. And finally, looking at place where the work is mainly carried out, we can see, of course, that uh, during the, the pandemic, the 2020-2021, percentage of people working for home increased, of, of course, uh, and the people working somewhere quite separate from home decreased. But most interesting that uh, the mean life satisfaction um, for people uh, working uh, um, in a place uh, that is the same ground or building as home, uh, they show the highest mean level of life satisfaction for all the period, uh, followed by people who, um, who work from home. Um, the people that work in the same ground or building as home are those that work uh, uh, in a place, maybe in the same uh, house, but not uh, a place which is not for domestic use. So maybe it can be a garage or, or garden office. Finally, we run a, a regression where the dependent variable are the four uh, uh, variables for well-being, life satisfaction, happiness, worthwhile and anxiety. And the independent variable are age, sex, ethnicity, marital status, level of education, um, economic activity and also types of occupation. And we used also gross week pay, but in a, in a second regression uh, where uh, we selected only employees. Is. And uh, what we found, first of all, is that all coefficients have explanatory variable, explanatory value. Sorry, 
And then we found uh, some results that uh, confirm uh, what is already known in the literature, literature which means that uh, um, the relation between age and uh, well-being is U-shaped, which means that uh, younger and older are uh, more happy and more satisfied, that women are happier and uh, more satisfied and also find things they are doing more worthwhile with respect to men but they are also more anxious and that people without qualification show lower well-being with respect to people with the all other levels of education i'm sorry for interrupting you but yes. just to remind you that we have uh, about two, two minutes left two minutes yes i'm i'm, I'm almost finished and uh, I'm going very quickly. Uh, we found that unemployed are sh uh, show lowest well-being with respect to employees. And then going to types of occupation, uh, we can see that all occupation and lower life satisfaction uh, than managers and directors, and that professional occupation and care in leisure and other services occupation show higher worthwhile with respect to managers and directors. So what are the main uh, key, the key takeaways of this work? First, that to be employed is important for well-being, and this is an acquired result in the literature, but also the type of occupation matter. There are some occupations that show higher level of life satisfaction, like managers and directors, and others that show higher worthwhile, like care and leisure and other services occupation. That analysis on job quality aspects um, can give us a lot of information on workers' well-being and, uh, and this an effect on overall life satisfaction. And this can help in shaping more targeted intervention and that uh, promote the measure the measurement of well-being in private and, pri and public sector uh, should be a priority and it is for sure this kind of information is an asset for uh, also for employer uh, it can be an instrument to for uh, policy makers and also for citizens thanks a lot for the conference that we would we would not go back to a plenary session to um, uh, conclude the conference so it is my uh, duty here to uh, conclude the conference for uh, this uh, session. So thanks again for all the speakers uh, who kindly uh, submitted a paper and made this uh, interesting presentation. I hope that uh, you found uh, interesting comments and uh, ideas uh, in relation to your research. Thank you, of course, to all those uh, of you who uh, took part to uh, the uh, to the event. I hope you found it interesting. Please, uh, as reminded by Emma, uh, fill in our evaluation survey. Uh, if you don't see it uh, in, so you will uh, in the uh, see it in, in an email uh, you will receive after uh, the event tomorrow, if I'm correct, uh, that will really be precious for us uh, when organizing the next conference. Um, and yeah, anyway, if you have any suggestions, um, we will be more than happy to take that into account. So thank you again, and uh, well, uh, enjoy the, the rest of your day.